So we built a decoder. The next one to build would be an encoder. An encoder is the opposite of a decoder. It takes a one of n representation and produces the binary code corresponding to which input is active. These are not used as often in our data path, but it's worth being complete. So let's say we had four inputs. And again, we're going to call these um, the data inputs, d3, d2, d1, d0. And we want to know which of those is active. We need a box called an encoder that will tell us with address lines A1 and A0, which of those four lines is active. How would we build that? Well, let's draw out the full truth table. Now, if we draw out a truth table, D3, D2, D1, D0, how many input combinations are there? Well, there's 16. That's a big, long table. But let's recognize that most of those are actually don't care because we want to have the situation where only one of those is active at a time. So there's only four of those. There's D0 is active and the other ones are not. There's D1 is active and the other ones are not. There's D2 is active and the other ones are not. And there's D3 is active and the other ones are not. Everything else is don't care. So if D0 is active, the output should be 0, 0. If D1 is active, uh, the output should be 0, 1. If D2 is active, the output should be 1, 0. If D3 is active, the output should be 1, 1. And for everything else, it's a big old don't care, which is going to make the result of this super easy. If all of these are don't care, all we have to do is figure out what situation is going to grant us a 0, 1, 0, 1 for A0, regardless of what else happens and grant us a 0011 for A1. Now be careful about looking at this and recognizing a pattern in the truth table because this is not a complete truth table. These min terms are not in the right order, right? These two are in the right order, but this one should be three further down, right? This is min term one, min term two, min term four, and min term eight. So we can't look at this and say this is just uh, D0 or something like that, right? It's not you can't read it off of there. What we have to do is look at these and say A0 is true when D1 is true or when D3 is true. And that should be enough because if D1 is true, then regardless of what else happens, we want A0 to be true. Because we know that in any other situation where D1 is true, we're never going to encounter that because we insist that this has to be a 1 of n. For an encoder to work, only one pin can be active. So we don't care what happens if D1 is 1. The only situation where D1 is, when the input of D1 is 1, is when the other inputs are 0. And so we can say A0 equals D1. If D1 is active, we need A1 to be, A0 to be 1. And, or it can also be active if D3 is, is active. So this is A1. A0 is D1 or D3, and A1, similarly, will only be true if D2 or D3 is true. Now, you can do the k-maps for this, and you can see that this is the end result. Uh, they're big uh, four-input k-maps, but most of them are filled with don't cares, and so we can make these big groups that result in two very small terms for both inputs. So the encoder is actually a very simple device compared to the decoder. It's just two OR gates. And if you wanted to build a bigger decoder, you'd have to do this kind of logic again, and the same kind of a result would happen. So encoders are fairly straightforward. Uh, it's worth looking at, and then maybe we'll draw out the circuit. So for this decoder, again, assuming it's one of n, then we can have uh, d, in fact, d0 is not even connected. Because if D0 is 1, we want our outputs to be 0. And so uh, our input is uh, A0. Uh, there's D0, D1, D2, and D3. A0 is just D1 or D3. And A1 is just D2 or D3. And that's the entire circuit for the uh, encoder. All right? This is going to take 
a one of n representation and make a two bit representation that corresponds to it. The reason this can be done is because we have all of these don't cares. And so we never expect to see a situation where D1 and D0 will be true at the same time. If we do, we got a problem. So because we insist this is one of n, then we can make a nice simple circuit to generate the uh, outputs, the encoded outputs for a given minterm. Now I'll leave it as an exercise to generate a eight to three encoder or a 16 to four encoder. Uh, there are other interesting things we can do with encoders like priority encoding so that if two inputs happen, if two inputs do happen at the same time, we can priorize the higher priority one. I'm not gonna build that right now. There are some notes about that in your notes.